Hi everyone, today's video then is how to change a thermostatic radiator valve for another one without having to drain the system down. Yeah, because that's the hassle isn't it, drain it down. I'll show you how it can be done. Before we begin, just would like to show you, this is our new radiator valve. Um, I've just took the towel end of it off, so you'll get it kind of like that. And if you look inside the valve, you'll see that it's kind of like a little washer jumper affair that goes up and down. If I turn the valve off, you'll see that it moves down and shuts the valve off. If I try to blow through that now, there's no chance it's fully off. Okay, and that valve, you can see it kind of opening as I open it back up fully, and you can once again blow through. So the principle of changing this valve is that, number one, your old valve that you want to change actually does turn off and you'll probably change it because you want to change to something like a Drayton Rad valve or something a bit better. You often get them sticking down the pins and every time you start the heating up after a little while it remains closed and uh, you kind of got a bit fed up with it. Now if it's a Rad valve say, that, you, that you can't shut off it won't close. You will soon find out if it doesn't do that because what we have to do is just drain the radiator that we're working on and if it keeps on running, you'll know that the valve is not closing off and I'm afraid you won't be able to do it at all without draining the system down, which is what we want to avoid. So that's the only criteria that the old valve you're changing must actually turn the radiator off. So all you've got to do is shut it all the way down. But I'll show you that in a second. Uh, it's fairly easy to do. So let's get started. First off then we're going to go to the lock shield end. Now my lock shield has actually got a proper turn cap because I couldn't be bothered to put one on but most of you will have a lock shield cap. It might have a screw in the top. If it has you've got to undo that first. If it hasn't just pull it off. Okay and there we have the valve. Now we've got to remember this this lock shield valve to turn it off is to count how many times how many turns the rat goes around. So I know mine's roughly about one and a half so there's one, in fact it's not even quite one, yeah there we go, mine's off already. It won't go anymore once it's there and we've got to remember the amount of turns it, it turns and this is to keep the system balanced up, okay. So when you turn it back on I know it only just needs almost a full turn, that's all it requires. So this side of the radio is now off. By the way, I am assuming that you've got your heating switched off. Okay, don't do this job with your heating running, okay? <laughs> right, this is the one we're going to renew then. It's our thermostatic radiator valve. And all we do now is shut this right down until it doesn't turn anymore. All right, that is now off, okay? Now, as I was saying earlier, if you've got a rad valve and you're not certain whether it is shutting off or not, what we're going to do now is we're going to put a little container under here and loosen it off and we've got to wait then for the water to run into a bowl. Now, if it doesn't stop running after a couple of hours, then it's letting by, and you'll soon tell because the pressure gauge on your combi will drop away. So have a look at it before you start, and if it does start to drop after a couple of hours, it's still going, because it should only take about half an hour, depending on the size of the radiator. The bigger, the longer it takes. But that's all you've got to drain, it's just the radiator, not the whole system. Okay, and this is just to make it easier. If you undo this now and try and turn it, you will get water back filling out of the radiator. It's a bit of hassle, it's not much, but it's enough to make the job a really bit too wet. So I tend to drain that out. And uh, okay, that's about it really. All we've got to make sure is that uh, we've got plenty of cloths and rags and stuff like that before we start. So we're going to crack this nut first and get it drained into a little container. So, we're going to crack this nut here, okay, we've got our spanner on, there it is there, and we'll just twist it down like so, and you can see the water is straight away there, now it won't run for long because no air is getting in behind it, and that sounds mad that you've got to uh, empty the rad, but it is the best way, because once it's come off completely, it will gurgle water all the time back there. So what we do now, to make it run, is we open the bleed valve on the top of the radiator. So we're going to use our key in here, and open this up, and this is going to allow the air in, which will allow the water to run out. There then you can see it running, 
and try a little container we have that and a bowl to tip it into and obviously plenty of old towels if you've got a carpet and it's above it it's always best to pull the carpet back because look you can see it tight slight misses it and so forth you can put something on there to run it into there a piece of something or other to keep it going in as the water gets to the end and we're nearly empty I've undone this up completely now because uh, it's nearly finished and it'll increase the flow and not hold it back quite so much so we're nearly empty a little rad like this one only takes about five to ten minutes to empty right we're nearly there now if you've got wallpaper the back of the wall behind the valve there I always tape up a little bit of cloth like this and just tape it up because if you get any black sludge fly up there it will stain the wallpaper and that will be it <laughs> it is kind of impossible to get it off which is why carpets pull them back out of the way please as you can see now I've pulled the pipe clear of the valve because it's completely down it's nice to have a little bit of room in these valves to do this job as well to pull it clear otherwise it's a bit tight and you're gonna have to, the only way you can do it is loosen this off which we're going to do in a minute anyway and turn it and it will ping out of that so i'll put it like that and show you how that bit's done but i'll just let it finish off first here we go then so the rad is now empty what we're going to do is slap on this nut off here now what you all need to do is hold against first with a grip and a spanner. So what you need is a pair of grips or two spanners. I prefer these, these are called footprints and what you do basically is you hold against. If you don't want to damage the valve, it's an old one, it doesn't matter, you're taking it off, it's no problem but when you put the new one on you may want to put some cloth around here. If you change this you get them, it doesn't really matter if you mark it or not. So what you're talking about is holding against, the spanner adjusted to there, just to hold it against and just like that okay. well, that's that's loose now you can see what can happen now now that's loose I can twist this out of the pipe if it was tight I'll show you there you could, you could kind of do this kind of thing like that I'll put it back in there so you can see it can go like that and you're out okay it's clear so this is the bit now it's facing you so that's the position you went on get your new radiator valve Here we have it make sure it's off this is the part that everybody doesn't like too much <laughs> because we're going to change this rad to not have now now hold it down with one hand that's a bit tight because of the paint on there so we're we'll loosening it right off so that we can turn it up easy if there's a bit of paint under it just do this and you can see it will loosen it up and that what we're going to do is quick flick really so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to flick this off of here and put my thumb over the end are you ready and there we have it thumb over the end over the end hope we didn't get any on the lens <laughs> hold on a second we'll just clean the lens off so nut off ready what we're going to do is chop that straight like so okay once it's on you can do this nut back up Right, I've just pulled the blind down because it's a little bit, the light's a little bit odd shining on there. So basically I've done that up now with the fingers and then we're going to turn it into that there, that point there. Like so once it's on there we can start this one. Like so. Bring them up and then tighten. Maybe the bottom one, that's the one that will weep. Um, you can, when that's off of there, if you want to put boss white around there, you can. Um, it's up to you, but it doesn't normally generally need it. So after that, actually, I'm just going to do him up. Once we're tight, we're all fine on the joint there. Feels good. We know this one's empty. It's a rad cylinder. We're going to shut the air valve off first before we turn the valves on. Turn our valve full on. Hear the water going in. Hear it going in there, even though the valve's off. It won't completely fill until we let the air out so here's our lock shield then so I'm going to turn it on the amount that we turned it off for me it's virtually a full turn so remember we do that may also be any amount it could be one two three four turns who knows <laughs> and then you can put your cap back on okay now just bleed your radiator 
if it's not much air coming out there the pressure is a bit low your combi may have been low in which case do top the pressure up to your combi when this does fill up you will need to check your combi boiler to make sure it's between 1.2 and 1.5 bars again if you've got an FE in your system you don't have to do anything <laughs> it will fill it up okay so we just let that bleed now and once that's full job done that's about it then it's one of those jobs if you've got the faith in yourself to do it you can and it saves all that draining down and all the associated things that go with that such as filling afterwards that takes ages bleeding all the other radiators that have to be done and also when you get air in the system it won't run you can get air locks you can spend hours clearing out air and doing things like this whereas that does the whole thing in that short time that I've showed you there so up to you <laughs> the long way or the quick way anyway that's about it all my stuff here I'm going to go Derek on 33 thanks for watching guys bye bye